Good morning, everybody. This is a live tropical update on Hurricane Isaias, which appears to be rapidly weakening so far on approach to eastern Florida. And as it's approaching the Nassau area of the Bahamas, it looks like the low-level center is becoming rapidly decoupled by the mid-level uh, rotation and the uh, deeper convection as well uh, that these storm systems thrive on. And uh, this is the uh, Radar Omega update here. And uh, this is what, what you can see. Here is the loop. And I can show you that, uh, that low level center. You can clearly see the spin there. It is going to pass to the west and southwest of Nassau. It did make landfall uh, just on the uh, larger island here, just to the southeast of it. Uh, Nichols uh, Island, I believe. Uh, Nichols Town is right on the northern part of that island, and it did make landfall uh, down on the southern portion of that large island. Relatively unpopulated uh, compared to Nassau there, but look at that low-level center that is moving away from the convection uh, so far. Uh, that's a very good sign uh, for eastern Florida. As uh, this system is approaching eastern Florida, it looks like tonight uh, through tomorrow, it's going to scrape nearer just to the east of the coast. And even the, the hurricane models are showing a little bit further east of a track, uh, a little bit further away from Florida. Uh, but Florida is going to be on the weaker side of this system regardless. Uh, but it does look like it is uh, rapidly weakening. And I wouldn't be surprised if uh, by the next advisory, uh, this actually weakens below uh, hurricane strength. And uh, again, here is uh, the visible satellite uh, image. This is the frame capture. And uh, you can see the, the low-level mesocyclone as well. And uh, the deeper convection off to the east is uh, starting to weaken a little bit as that low-level center is moving off uh, away from that convection. Uh, this is a low-level center right here. The mid-level spin is likely closer to that convection. And they're becoming more tilted from the low levels up to the mid-levels aloft. And that's because of the wind shear. So whenever you get a tilted system like this, that means it's starting to interact with uh, deep layer winds, uh, deep layer wind shear. Uh, usually supercell storms or mid-latitude cyclones thrive off of that tilt in those temperature gradients, but tropical systems thrive off of the lack of shear. They prefer what's called a barotropic environment. They want really weak upper level winds, minimal wind shear. Uh, they want convection, a vertically stacked uh, system that's releasing latent heat that's causing to low-level pressure falls. Uh, you want the mid-level spin uh, coupled with that low-level circulation to really maximize intensification. So this uh, visible satellite imagery here is definitely showing a weakening system. It's showing this low-level center decoupling uh, from the mid-level center. That's a tilt uh, that causes tropical systems to weaken. And we'll, we definitely can see on the infrared satellite imagery that the tops of these storms are starting to collapse uh, with the uh, cluster of convection. And in fact, these blobs off to the east that are uh, being created by conver convergence that's uh, distant from the inner core of this hurricane, they're actually higher topped and uh, more robust convection than what's uh, located close uh, to the low level uh, mesocyclone. But you can still see these hurricane wa uh, warnings that are in effect uh, across the east coast of Florida. Uh, so you still want to be on guard in Florida. You're still going to have dangerous impacts along the coastline as uh, this system, even though it is weaker, uh, that's causing it to possibly wobble back toward the coastline and a little bit closer to the coast. And there still is going to be some coastal erosion, uh, some strong onshore winds just to the north of that circulation. So there's still going to be dangerous impacts across East Florida. And that's why you got to keep your guard up. I could also see some water spouts uh, going in the outer bands of this. Uh, starting tonight through tomorrow, maybe even some supercellular water spouts. But if there's a lack of convection near the center, that's also going to minimize the water uh, spout threat just a little bit. Uh, but we're going to look at the forecast of the system as it recurves off to the north, uh, heading toward the North Carolina Outer Banks. There was a brief discussion uh, earlier today uh, as to whether the Outer Banks might be a more favorable intercept now. Uh, as of last night, I was leaning a bit toward heading to Florida uh, so far this morning, and I had a flight into Orlando that landed at about 3.30 p.m., and I could have been on the coastline in no time, uh, but I canceled that flight uh, due to the uh, inadequate uh, satellite presentation uh, with this storm this morning. And uh, there you can see that well-defined center. So let's look at the infrared satellite imagery now, and then I can show you how the convection is beginning to weaken as that low-level center has migrated away from the mid-levels. That decreases low-level convergence. Uh, that decreases the strength of the convection. 
that uh, lowers the top, uh, the tops that that convection is reaching into the troposphere. And uh, that, that, that uh, corresponds to a warming of those cloud tops as indicated by satellite imagery. And here you can see that blob. And the spin is uh, at the mid-levels is almost non-existent with this blob now. And you can't even see the low-level uh, spin. That's because there's no convection that's associated with it. Uh, so it's uh, relatively warm compared to these colder cloud tops of the convection that's reaching higher up in the troposphere. The low-level cyclone uh, you can't even see on the infrared satellite. So this is great news uh, for the coast of Florida, uh, as I don't think this is going to be a hurricane when it reaches the coastline. But of course, uh, leave it uh, to the National Hurricane Center uh, to adjust the forecast track and the intensity as this reaches the coast. It still definitely could make a very close pass to Palm Beach area, this area that extends a little bit further out in the Atlantic. And there could be some dangerous impacts near and just to the north of the center in terms of that onshore flow, strong winds, some water spout potential as well. And these hurricane warnings do extend well off to the north all the way to the Florida border. And then tropical storm conditions are possible along the Georgia coastline. But again, this thing is weakening dramatically. You can see that blob just off to the east of it that actually has colder cloud tops, uh, healthier convection there, no spin with that as well. Uh, many people have been asking me if it's possible for both of these blobs of convection to develop into tropical cyclones. And usually that doesn't happen because this blob that's a little bit removed uh, from the center, uh, that's correlated or associated with uh, uh, this main system. Uh, there's some convergence off to the east. There's uh, been some southerly feeder bands that have develop developed. And oftentimes these complexes of storms will form as uh, those moist uh, feeder bands interact with the higher terrain of the islands out there. They can con congeal. Uh, there could be some pressure falls, even some con more convergence. Uh, but you, you can see that there's really no rotation with this, uh, no substantial enough pressure falls to really get those positive feedback mechanisms going. And a lot of times the main core will disrupt the environment around it. So it's difficult for both these to form. Uh, but if two tropical cyclones do get this close together, they often will interact with each other. Uh, we call that Fujiwara interaction and the, it will adjust uh, and modulate uh, the individual tracks of the individual storms. Uh, but in this case, uh, these are just likely gonna be two blobs of storms. The eastern one though is still a tropical cyclone. Likely now it's probably a strong tropical storm, although we still have to, uh, we need some more data. We need some hurricane reconnaissance aircraft data. We need the National Hurricane Center to go through all that data, and then it'll be adjusted as we go through the afternoon today, but I wouldn't be surprised if this is a tropical storm by the next update. But here are the 12Z uh, hurricane model intensity forecasts and the global models. And uh, interestingly, the European model uh, does show a reinvigoration of that system on approach to North Carolina. We were discussing this a little bit yesterday that as that system accelerates off to the north and the northeast, it's possible that the storm relative wind shear could decrease a little bit and over those very warm waters of the Gulf Stream that could lead to intensification. Uh, but that's not an island out there uh, by itself. That's an outlier solution. And most of the models uh, show that Hurricane Isaias has already reached its peak intensity uh, probably last night and uh, should just continue to weaken as the southwesterly wind shear increases and the environment becomes even more hostile. So the official forecast actually has it as a tropical storm as it uh, passes east through the Outer Banks. And then it'll transition to an extra tropical cyclone on approach to New England. And also could be some coastal erosion, some very strong winds up there. As that system, the wind field will expand as it uh, begins to uh, transition into an extra tropical cyclone and interact with those temperature gradients and increasing wind shear even more than it's doing now. And that'll lead to an even more vertically tilted system from the surface low up to the upper level low. And uh, then that system will begin to strengthen as it moves across the Northern Atlantic, but as an extra tropical cyclone and uh, not a tropical cyclone. But here are those uh, hurricane and global model tracks. This is also from the tropicaltidbits.com website uh, run by uh, the legendary Levi Cohen. Just such a gem for the meteorological community making all this data uh, available. And here you can see that uh, pretty good, good agreement uh, now with the uh, hurricane models uh, with a relatively close uh, pass of this uh, weakening tropical cyclone. But just offshore now, so most of the models, after wobbling back to the west, 
Uh, getting all of us really excited, showing a landfall along eastern Florida. Now it looks like they have wobbled back just a bit. But still, uh, locations like Myrtle Beach, Cape Fear, the North Carolina Outer Banks definitely need to keep an eye on this system. Uh, the European model does have it uh, reinvigorating an approach to eastern North Carolina, and that certainly could happen as the storm recurves, lifts off to the northeast, and experiences just a little bit less in terms of the storm relative wind shear. But it is going to make a really close pass still to eastern Florida. So Floridians need to keep your guard up as the storm system passes very close. There's still going to be dangerous impacts, trees down, dangerous storm surges, rip tides out there along the coastal waters. So certainly heed those evacuation orders, uh, heed the warnings that are issued uh, uh, by those officials, and uh, definitely be careful out there. So now I want to look at the GFS which I believe has had a pretty good handle on this storm, despite yesterday uh, briefly taking it over the Florida Peninsula. Uh, now it seems to be back on board, showing uh, the proper evolution of this storm. And the GFS takes it very close uh, to the Florida coastline. Uh, this is by tomorrow morning at about 12Z Sunday morning. That's going to be pretty close to Palm Beach. Uh, lifting off to the north along the Florida coastline, showing a steady state tropical cyclone. So it'll probably be a strong tropical storm, maybe a minimal hurricane as it's lifting just along the coast, likely causing quite a bit of coastal erosion as well. Uh, this is by Sunday night at about 6 Z. Uh, has it near the Daytona Beach area uh, by Monday morning. Definitely a, a not moving incredibly fast as this uh, trough just upstream is taking its time. Uh, to pick up this upper level storm system. We can look at that trough. Here is the trough with the trough axis centered over the Mississippi River Valley. The stronger flow though accelerating off to the northeast also over top that Bermuda High and it's almost trying to leave this storm system behind a little bit but it is still going to be picked up by this trough. The trough axis lags back behind across the Mississippi River Valley there. And the GFS also shows a reinvigoration of the system a bit. Uh, it's a little bit too close to the coastline according to the GFS track. The European track, uh, the European model though, has that tracking just a little bit more offshore over the warm waters of the Gulf Stream, a little bit further away from land. So I think that's why those intensity models are showing a reinvigoration of the system on approach to the Outer Banks. But the GFS has that track a little bit more over land. Uh, than the European does. It's going to bring some heavy rain too across eastern North Carolina, southeastern Virginia. I know that you need the rainfall down there, but you definitely don't need the flooding that comes with it and the winds. A lot of onshore flow, probably coastal erosion as well, even impacting portions of New Jersey, New York. This is by Tuesday afternoon, midday. Uh, it has this basically a subtropical cyclone, we'll call it lifting up uh, toward New England, but transitioning into extra tropical. Probably gonna be a squall line associated with this thing as it lifts off to the Northeast. This is Tuesday night, approaching the New York City area. And still, I, I do expect this system to maybe intensify, but it doesn't really merge with a very potent upper level storm system as it could. See how the system kind of becomes vertically stacked over the James Bay area, instead of ejecting uh, pulling in this uh, tropical moisture and uh, but this should become the dominant upper low this is the surface low now associated with that upper low a good vertical stack going but this isn't really an open wave if this were more of an open wave then i think that this would become a pretty deep surface low as it moves across the northern atlantic and uh, could impact the canadian maritimes as a stronger system but it really just kind of weakens as it comes into new england there so i don't expect substantial impacts but there's definitely going to be onshore flow a lot of rain wind out there and uh definitely could could be pretty substantial across new england but it's possible even across eastern florida there may not even be any rain today with that low level cyclone kind of decoupling from the mid-level circulation and that convection a little bit i could see tonight and tomorrow I mean, I still think there's going to be some more convection that's going to form uh, associated with that low-level center. Probably as it gets a little bit closer to eastern Florida, interacts with the land. You get a little convergence of that wind as well across east Florida. could be pretty substantial. Maybe some water spout potential as well. But overall, it's looking like quite a weak system out there. 
And we do have some tropical waves to watch. Uh, there's this one that uh, may form. There's also a tropical depression 10 that looks like it's going to recurve. That one's to the north of the Cape Verde Islands. But that's way out there, just off the coast of, uh, of, of Africa there, just to the north of the Cape Verde Islands. So there are some more uh, systems to watch, but usually out here, uh, deeper out into the Atlantic, it's more of a middle of August through September, even October type, uh, more, more core of the tropical season when these things really ramp up and you get those Cape Verde monsters that just cruise across the entire Atlantic, impacting portions of the Lesser and Greater Antilles and even the southeastern U.S. Uh, East Saias was just a little bit early relative to climatology. That's why I think that there was just a little bit of uh, too, too hostile of an environment with that strong deep layer shear uh, to the east of the east coast. But the Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico are very much in play during the early season. And uh, Hannah intensified into a pretty stout Category 1 hurricane. And usually that's where you watch for these stronger uh, tropical cyclones to really ramp up. Uh, but Isaias, thankfully for East Florida, does appear to be on a, a dramatic weakening trend. But of course, you never want to be the person that identifies a weakening trend and then it blows up. People are caught off guard off of Eastern Florida. So if you're a Floridian, certainly don't let your guard down. Stay tuned to this. Uh, to, to the forecast updates, keep your plans in place. And, uh, but, but overall, this thing is really weakening and you can definitely see it here on the high resolution satellite imagery from Radar Omega. There you can see that low level center right there. That's what's left of Hurricane Isaias that seems to have peaked last night, even the night before uh, at about 85 knots or about 85 mile per hour maximum sustained winds at the low levels. Uh, that pressure was really never able to drop uh, much below about 985, 987 millibars there. Even though some of the hurricane reconnaissance aircraft was showing just a little bit lower than that earlier, it does look like this uh, overall is starting to weaken. So thank you, everybody. I'm going to continue these uh, daily uh, live updates on Isaias as it tracks closer to Florida. I'll be doing these all day tomorrow uh, as it heads toward the North Carolina Outer Banks, and I'm still watching these models closely. And if it does look like this system could reinvigorate over the Gulf Stream on approach to eastern North Carolina, uh, I'll be on a flight out there uh, to cover this in person. Uh, but I'm going to continue doing these live updates through this entire storm. And we're going to watch those storm systems that are out over the deeper, uh, out, uh, further out over the Atlantic as well. Uh, but I hope you guys enjoyed my weather reports and uh, have a good rest of your Saturday.